Hello and welcome to this Affinity software tutorial. I say software because it will work the same in Affinity Photo, Affinity Designer and Affinity Publisher. Now I'm going to do all this in Designer. We're looking at the Transform tab which is found down here on the right. And this is tab here. But it is available in Publisher down in the same place. Let me just shut that down. I don't need that now. And Affinity Photo where because this is a more cluttered panel down here the tab is called XFM when you look at it um, but you, once you click on it it will change to transform and just in case for some reason you do not have a transform tab available you can come up to view down to studio and transform if you click on that it will either turn it on or turn it off depending on the state it is at the at present time let me shut that down and we'll come back to designer now I'm sure there is uses for it in photo um, but probably not so many when you're editing a photo would you need transform so you might need it more often in affinity designer and affinity publisher uh, where you might be setting up a, a maybe a poster or a book where you need to have things in certain particular places um, so this is why I want to have a look at it and I'm going to use designer as the software that I use to look at this so first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw out some guidelines now to do this I need the rulers visible which again you can view and then click on show rulers or you can do Control plus R or Command plus R to get the rulers to show and then when you're on the move tool you can just click on the ruler and drag out a guideline so I'm going to drag this out to roughly the 40 mark up there and I'm going to drag one from the top down and I'm going to have it on the 40 sort of millimeter mark on this ruler now we can just double check and make sure this is correct by again coming to the view menu and guides manager and as you can see they're, they're on 39 so what I'm going to do is I'm going to double click on this one make it 40 and double click on that one and make that 40 um, and if you have percents rather than millimeters just take the tick out of the percent box so I now know that they are on both exactly on 40 millimeters so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw out a rectangle and it's just it doesn't matter what size or it is and I'm just going to change its color to make it more visible for this video let's make it slightly lighter orange like that and I'm going to make this the uh, a square so in the transform tab in fact let me if I click and drag this out we can have them a lot nearer to each other the current width and height of this box that I've just drawn randomly is 88.3 by 81.3 so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make them a square so I'm going to make that 80 millimeters wide by 80 millimeters in height so that square is now actually square and I will click on the move tool and I will because I got the snapping on this object should snap to the guidelines so if I move it over you can see that the X and Y is 40 by 40 which is where these guidelines are so if you needed now if you're making a page and you have you want text here and you have a picture to go in at some later date you can put a placeholder 
object that's 80 millimeters by 80 millimeters in the exact spot that you need it to be. So when you do have the photograph later on, you can come back and place it into this square. So that is like probably the main reasons why you might need the transform box to make sure something is in its exact position and its exact size. And let me just, I'm going to duplicate this and I'll just drag this second one down here and change its color so I don't get confused over which layer I'm working on. So we have a blue layer and an orange layer. So as you can see, this is still 80 by 80 in size, but its X and Y position will vary as I move this around. If I come back to the orange box here, now 40 by 40 is where these lines cross. And this is sort of denoted by this box of dots here. As you can see, the largest dot uh, square amongst these sort of dots is this top left corner. So that is the 40 by 40. But if I click in the middle, for example, the point it's being measured from is now the middle of this square. So that X and Y position is now 80 by 80. Even though I've not moved anything other than the point that the X and Y are being measured from. So if I click in the bottom right corner, that is now this one here, which is 120 and 120 from the rulers. So the X and Y positions is relevant to which node is being highlighted. If I do like this one here on the left in the middle, although it is still on the 40 line going horizontally, um, vertically I should say, the, the horizontal line is now being measured from the middle of the box uh, square, which is now in the 80 millimeter mark. And if I click it down here, it is still 40 but it's now being measured from the 120 millimeter mark. So this box here is quite important as to where you are measuring from. Now I'm guessing it the because if you see if I pick on this this bottom right, this top left one is still a dark blue colour, whereas all the others have remained light blue. I'm guessing this is because this top left corner is the default um, holding point for whenever you make a rectangle or, or whatever other shapes or text because possibly especially like I mean most languages sort of read from left to right um, so its default point might always this is my best guess is why the top left is the default position whereas if your version of affinity designer or what have you is set up to work in a language that reads from right to left maybe your default one is over here but that is a guess because I've not seen another version in, you know, in a different language but now the, you have two boxes down the bottom here which is R and S and this is rotation and like sk uh, skewer can't think of the right word for it um, so if I click on this bottom box down here now as we know you can if you move the cursor to the this top white node the cursor will change to a double ended arrow and you can rotate this and when I do this, you can see, let me move this down here so they are much more together. This R will alter as I rotate this round. 
and and it, if you come to the corners again you can rotate it but it always rotates from the middle even if you change the point down here say to this bottom right corner if I rotate this it is still rotating from the middle but if you wanted to rotate it from and like the bottom right corner I'll do this on the orange box up here you need to do it from this transform box so I've got the bottom right corner highlighted and then you've got this slider and as you can see this is now rotating from that anchor point which I set in the bottom right corner so similarly if I say go for the middle left and rotate from there it will rotate from that position so again I'll come down to this one here now if you bring the cursor just above one of these outline dots here the cursor will change to a double ended arrow and you can I can't, I can't think, oh shear, that's the word, shear the box or text or shape or whatever it is you're doing and you can also do it from the side like this but again it sort of has no real effect as to where you select on this box here it sort of will always sort of go from the middle you can see the S is changing and even the R value is changing as I'm sort of rotating and shearing at the same time so I'll highlight this box up here so again you could just shear from using this slider and I'm not certain whether it will make a difference as to where you shear from let's try on that yes, I think it's that much more severe shearing because I'm using this anchor point here let me put this back to the middle rather than say let's try this anchor point down here and shear yeah, so it doesn't seem to make, make that much difference as to whether you're using an anchor point with the shear but it is more noticeable with the rotate slider when using this rather than using the handles to rotate now there is also another way to sort of rotate and shear the positions uh, like the anchor points let's go back to this blue one and I'll put these back to zero now if as you can see this bottom right corner is the biggest square so that is currently the sort of point that the it is anchored and will shear and rotate from if I click on that again as you can see in the center turned up as a target so you can click and drag this target sort of anywhere you want so if you don't want to rotate exactly from the corner you might want to ro rotate from say there for example it will rotate from that point rather than a particular node or the center if I come back up to this yellow box and I let's say I have this top center point set that target has disappeared but you can 
access it, that target also from up here where it's got enable transform origin you click on that that target target will turn up and you can then rotate from the point you set so that I think sort of covers all the things that the transform tab can do hopefully I've explained it quite well and hopefully this has helped some people especially beginners in either Affinity Photo, Affinity Designer oh yeah so I almost forgot I wanted to demonstrate that you can do this not just on shapes but you can use this with text and you move that out of the way and I'll just add a bit of text here and let me bring this transform box down so much like the shapes with text you can rotate and sort of alter the anchor point from where you rotate and you can also shear again much like you could with the shape so be it a shape or be it text you can use the transform panel and I'll just put this back in the panel down here on the right where it should be and that is it really so thank you for watching and goodbye